Hey everyone, it's Mithrilda and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So I've started block four homework one and I'm tired so I'm taking a break. I thought now would be a fun time to explain what exactly direct painting and block four is all about and also show off my home studio space a little bit. So this is my little corner where I have my desk and my computer set up. Unfortunately, there is no overhead lighting in this area at all. So that's why I've got this army of lamps. I have one lamp here pointed at the palette. I have two lamps pointing at the canvas. I have another lamp just lighting up the back. I don't like this setup at all. As you can see, there's so much shininess and reflections coming off the canvas. In fact, somehow it looks a little bit better through the camera. It's a lot shinier in real life and it makes it really hard to work on. So I think after this painting, I'm going to invest in an overhead fluorescent bulb like Kevin has been telling me to do. So what is the homework assignment? We are back to grayscale. I think it's just for one painting or maybe two paintings. So basically in direct painting, instead of doing the blocks one through three procedure where we start with all the shadows and then fill in all the lights and then make gradients in between them, we are now starting with the darkest color and moving our way up toward the brightest color. And we are making the gradients as we go, we are filling in the colors as we go, and theoretically we don't have to go back to any colors that we've used before. And on top of that, we now get to match the reference image exactly. And we're expected to match it exactly as close as possible. We get to use the blackest blacks and the whitest whites, and that's really exciting. So if anyone is curious when we finally get to match reality, that is now, but it's also stressful because like there's so many more ways to go wrong. So I've been working on this for a few hours today and it is really, really tiring and like mentally taxing. Um, you know, I got pretty good at the old procedure where I didn't have to be actively thinking, thinking all the time. And now with this, like, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. Everything's really confusing. I know that this will get easier eventually, but I am so mentally exhausted just from this little bit of painting. I really want to get it finished because it's never fun working with a half dry painting. The painting is finally done after about five hours of work and hanging out here in the kitchen since the lighting is better for photo taking. Other people will have to be doing this too, right? <laughs> I've been like running around the house, looking at it from different angles and holding it up to try and find photo angles. I feel like now that I'm stepping back and looking at it, it's looking pretty nice, except at the end with all the fabric folds and stuff, I was getting really lost in the technique and I was jumping back and forth between the darker colors and the lighter colors and I just couldn't hold them all in my head. So I'm not even sure if I was applying the technique correctly toward the end. So I guess that's the big part that worries me about working here at home. The fact that, you know, I could have done the complete wrong thing on this entire painting, but if it comes out okay, then there's no way for the grader to tell and give me that feedback on my process. I don't know, I'm kind of curious. Can the graders actually tell when you don't do things properly? I feel like I've always tried my best <laughs> and they never said anything about it, but I don't know. So I submitted my homework at around 6 p.m. last night and I got it back at about noon the next day. So it always feels like forever to get the homework graded, but generally it takes less than 24 hours, which is really awesome. Dimitri says that this is a solid painting and he only has a few nitpicks, so that's definitely a good feeling. What I'm hearing is that it at least looks like I mostly know what I'm doing from the final product. And I made it onto the wall, woo! Also, bruh, they are not making it easy for me to get through this block. One of these days I'll work up the energy to finish this next batch of videos. So I thought it would be fun to frame up some of my art. I think the paintings look so cute and professional once they're all dressed up. I know that Kevin says we're not really supposed to use these mat boards, but I'm not really sure how else to cover up the messy edges on the canvas. Especially on a painting like this one that has like non-standard dimensions, these messy edges don't even get covered by that mat board that I bought like pre-cut, so I would have to custom cut one in order to fit this. Or maybe he just gets all of his paintings custom framed? I don't know, it's uh, expensive. 
So I think in the future, at least for now, if I ever want to make any real artworks to sell or to frame and display, then I'll keep it to standard proportions to make it easier to display. All right, so a quick recap on what I've been up to and some vague future plans that I'm going to be going toward. One, I finished block four homework one, yay, but this now means I have to go through some more videos. I also want to install some lights and I also lost my eyedropper for like the linseed oil. So for this last homework assignment, I was just sort of digging it out of the bottle with my palette knife and trying to figure out how much like that was a disaster. I don't want to do that again. So I emailed support asking them whether I need to get another like special evolve eyedropper or if I can just buy one on my own, but I'm not going to do any more homeworks until yeah, I get the light installed and have my eyedropper so I can use the oil properly again. So in addition to Evolve, I've also been looking into and starting to take some Brainstorm classes. So Brainstorm is a concept art and design school in California, and they're normally in person. However, for COVID, they've taken all their classes online, which is like kind of a crazy once in a lifetime opportunity. So right now I'm taking the art and business course with James Pack, who is the co-founder of the school. So in that class, he talks about art and career and working freelance and also having a job in the entertainment industry, concept, art and design, all that stuff. I'm not really sure what I want to do. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a really useful class for me. We've had one session so far and my homework is to complete my one year, three year, five year plan for my future, as well as examine my passions and fears and do a lot of introspection. So I think it'll be fun to go through that class and the homework I'm doing there as well. So look out for my one year, three year, five year plan coming up. I'm also gonna be signing up for an additional class or two with Brainstorm for January in the next semester because registration is today and I haven't exactly decided which one I want to take yet. So um, look out for that soon too. I'll definitely talk about what I'm learning in that class, more progress updates, all that good stuff. I think most of my stress over picking an actual class to take next session is like, what am I ready for and what am I going to get the most out of? Like for the concept art bootcamp, it's for beginners and intermediate students, but like beginners to what? Beginners to concept art and like advanced artists? Cause like, I don't know if I can do this stuff at my current skill level, no matter how good the teaching is and how hard I try. And I just really don't want to waste my money and waste my time. Because if they're only going to be online for like next year, then I have to really be efficient with how I build my skills up gradually and don't jump into something that I can't handle. Because instead of taking a class that would actually help me improve a lot, I would just be drowning in a class that I can't handle and waste that whole semester. I think it'll be interesting to get into more of the concept art space, moving away from traditional and like the fine art stuff that I've been up to. Right, because I guess if we think all the way back to the beginning of this channel, concept art is way closer to the kind of art I want to be making in the future. And I think these classes will be a good way to just bridge that gap. It's really interesting talking to my classmates in the class I'm taking now because some of them are students, some of them are at art college, design college, some of them are working professionals, some of them are teachers, and some people are trying to make a career change later in life. Like I've never been in a group with so many people who take art and art as a career seriously and they're all just mad skilled and I'm just like, whoa. So this is what art school is for. Anyway, so the class I'm taking now I think is a five week course. I've done one week and I'll fill you guys in on what happens in the other weeks. In addition to that, I would really appreciate any feedback or criticism on my videos, my video formats, editing, anything about it that bothers you or that you'd like to see. I feel like I'm kind of stuck and uh, in a bit of a malaise about my like video editing and making process. And I just really appreciate hearing what you think. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey so far. I've made a lot of progress and I've had a lot of fun over these past few years and I'm excited to embark on my next chapter of this journey. 
Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone, and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.